Welcome to, welcome to the uh, December 7th meeting of the Far River Civil Commission. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that <clears throat> such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ferlin, would you do the roll call, please? Hello. I've, can you, can you people hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Paul? Paul's not coming on. I wonder if they were disconnected. I don't see them listed anymore. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't either. <clears throat> Hello. Ned, I'm sorry. They just got logged out, so they're logging back in right now. Okay. Apologize. Had to there we go. All right. On our side. Hi again. Okay. Um, Paul? Yeah. Sorry, okay. Paul, could, could, you, could you do the uh, roll call, please? I did the open meeting in law. Okay. Excellent. Uh, President Almeida? Here. Member Howiak? Here. Member Souza? Here. And uh, Member Bernier is not attending this meeting. Okay. Um, the members of the City of Fall River Sewer Commission are participating in the December 2021 meeting remotely. I, President Ned Almeter, Commissioner Rennie Hawayak, and Commissioner Richard Souza are all participating remotely. Commissioner Ron Bernier is not attending. Now that takes us, we all have, I believe, our agenda. Uh, the first item on the agenda was citizen input. I understand that um, there's been no request for citizen input. Am I correct? That is correct. Okay, that takes us to item number two, which is for um, tabled matters that basically references the minutes of the uh, July 21st, 2021 meeting. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, this is something that um, had to be done at the time that meeting took place. Um, and I think it was rightly pointed out by Rene that there was um, some changes that was made within 48 hours of the scheduled meeting to the agenda. So it was something that had to be tabled at that time. Correct. Am I correct? Yes. All right. So um, now we're at the point where we have to uh, uh, approve the minutes of that meeting. So um, if anybody, unless anybody has any questions or comments about it, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of July 21st. I, I, would, rec I would recommend that it be lifted from the table, a motion to be lifted from the table, maybe in order, and then it could be voted on. Second. Okay, all in favor? Uh, we got a roll call on this, Paul? Yes. I just, I just wanted- uh, I, I Renee, wasn't, we have a second on it. I, I was, no, I wasn't seconding. I was absent at the meeting, so I don't know if I can approve the minutes. <clears throat> okay, they could stay tabled till the next meeting as well. They could be voted on at that time. Okay, so um, let's, uh, I'll entertain a motion to table- um, Question? The, the meeting. Uh, yeah, I just wouldn't lift them from the table. They could just stay on the table and we'll lift them at the next right. meeting. I was going to say if the uh, if the items are in that packet that we got, uh, we could look through it pretty, you know, pretty quick, but never mind. We'll table it. Thank you. All right. Do we need a motion to table it though, right? Uh, there wasn't a motion to lift from the table, so it would just stay on the table until the next meeting. We'll bring it back. Okay. At the All right. So we don't need a motion to handle it. Right. Nope, I don't think that motion ever was uh, was was passed. It lift it from the table, so we're good. We can move on to item three. Okay, item number three: minutes of the previous meeting held on August 18, two thousand twenty-one. Um, if you had the opportunity to read through it yes. uh, or have any comments about it, um, 
make a you know mention it now. Uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting held on August 18th. Make a motion to approve the meeting uh, of August the 18th, 2021. Second. Okay, roll call. Member Sousa? Here. Yes. Member Howayak? Yes. President Almeida? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Item number four was a request to haul septage to the wastewater treatment facility located on Bay Street. The company that's requesting um, uh, the use of the facility is a company called P Palace Parties. Um, the only question I have at this point in time is that they're looking for a temporary um, approval. Um, this is the first time I've ever seen anybody requesting to use a facility on a temporary basis. Um, any idea, Paul, what, you know, what the reasoning is on this? So they requested that we issue, that we allow them to temporarily dump because they were already approved by the Board of Health and everything. Uh, so this would be for formal approval. Um, so prior to this, prior to the meeting, I did allow them a temporary revocable uh, ability to dump because uh, they were hauling out of the, uh, within the city of Fall River already. Um, so it would be the, up to the board to allow them for a final approval. So that's essentially what they're requesting here. Okay. Um, all right. Just struck me kind of, Kind of funny that the wording on it was temporary. Um, so they have been using the facilities at this point in time on a temporary basis yep. for the status. Any problems? Uh, no, they've been very good. Uh, they've kept up to uh, they've kept up to date with payments and everything like that. So they've been good to deal with. Haven't heard any complaints from our uh, staff that receives from them. Okay. Um, anybody have any problems with this? Richard? I have a question as to, uh, now this company's evidently, they've been in business uh, prior to coming to Fall River, I would assume. How come they didn't know that they needed permission? So I guess they came into the city and they didn't uh, go through the full process to be able to, they, they didn't, somebody didn't direct them towards us. Health department went and inspected their trucks to be able to haul within the city. They thought that's all that was needed to be able to dump oh, at. Okay. They thought that's all they needed to be able to dump at the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, they didn't know that they needed sewer commission approval also to dump. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have no problem with it at this point in time. Um, on that basis, Renee, you okay with this? Sure. All right. Um, on that basis there, I'll entertain a motion to approve um, the P Palace Parties Company to uh, uh, allow septage to be brought to the um, wastewater treatment plant. Anybody want to make that motion? Motion made. Second the motion. Uh, roll call. Member Sousa? Yes. Member Howayak? Yes. President Almeida. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving along. This takes us to item number five. A change order number five in the amount of 125000 almost $126,000 for uh, the wastewater treatment facility project contract number one. <clears throat> now, um, Paul, uh, with respect to this, uh, do you anticipate this to be the last change order? Uh, we may have one final uh, closeout balancing one. Um, as they go through punch list items and some final closeout things, there has been a, a couple of minor um, things that have come up, uh, nothing close to this magnitude. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to support our case that there's no cost increase to the, related to those. Um, but uh, as of this point right now, uh, we don't have any other formal pending change orders. So, 
Okay, so from what I can, from what I surmise from what this is all about, uh, we started with almost 19 million on the project. And if right now with this change order, we're, uh, we're up to approximately uh, 19.9, uh, which is approximately about a 5% increase. That's right. A little, little better than 5% increase from where we started. Um, as, at this point in time, with this change order being approved, what have it, will this take us to the, you think, the completion of the project? Yeah. With, re with respect to contract number one. Yeah, yes. My expectation is this will uh, take us through. Again, there's just a couple of other minor things that we're working through with the contractor. I'm hoping for no uh, no cost uh, changes on those, um, but the project isn't closed out yet, so I don't want to say that we're not going to have any anything else. But uh, if they are, they'll be very minor. Okay. Um, is West Construction still on the site? Uh, they do have limited staff on the site right now. It's a, more of a part-time basis uh, for their superintendent and uh, subs. It's a couple of subs that uh, are closing out. So compressor, close out of the compressor, uh, final training of the compressor uh, still needs to be completed. Uh, we have uh, training in relation to uh, uh, secu security and control access system that was installed in this contract. Uh, so it's a little bit more training, uh, some updating of asset management uh, that's required through the contract uh, and asset uh, uh, input into our asset management system. Um, so it's, it's some of the closeout stuff. Uh, so it's limited. They're on the site limited right now. They, they don't have a full-time presence. Okay, good. That's good. Um, just, just for my recollection, um, the contractor for uh, contract two is who? Uh, Daniel O'Connell and Sons. Yeah, okay. That, yeah. I couldn't remember that. Um, all right. How do, you know, how do you feel about how do you feel about what's what took place? Do um, you think Wes has done a good job? Yeah. Overall, I think Wes Wes has done a very Wes in the the subs that they had. Uh, one of them, which was very, uh, very big within this contract, one Lavangie Electric, um, all very good to deal with. Uh, you know, the, uh, you know, you, you talked about 5% of change orders within the contract. Some of those things, too, as, as you well know, uh, owner requested. Um, you know, originally uh, when we were going through and you had the uh, PSA building, uh, the PSA building. Uh, electrical had to be rerouted. So it went across the roof. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't going to put, you know, and I didn't think it was in the sewer commission's best interest to put, uh, you know, all electrical cables across a roof on a 20 year old roof. Um, that was something that we added to the contract. So that was almost a request on our part, uh, which added a cost into it. Um, another roof that we got replaced in this contract that needed to be done was on the intermediate pump station. Uh, that was imperative that it be completed um, just because of the condition of it as we, we got into a couple of storms and things that came up. Uh, so we were able to get that completed. Um, replacement of our uh, incoming uh, wet weather pumps uh, was something else that through this contract, something that came up that needed to be done uh, that was in our best interest to do it through the contract. Uh, and it, that was an old owner requested. So that whole 5% change wasn't uh, just totally driven by the contractor. I want to make that clear. Um, you know, I would have to say potentially we'd be looking at maybe a 2%, 2.5%, uh, you know, was driven by uh, other issues. So if I had to throw a guess at the, at, at the board um, within this change order, there's, there's a couple of different things. And a lot of them have to do with uh, things that we couldn't see during the design process or, uh, you know, that you couldn't see till you really got in there and start taking stuff apart. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out to the commission. So within here, there's two things, the PSA building uh, 
revised concrete repair, which is a large portion of this change order, 114,000. Uh, hey. And then also dewater and building uh, additional miscellaneous work. Um, this, uh, this piece right here, you should be able to see it clearly. This is an angle uh, plate that comes down. So it sits on some of the beams that go across in our dewatering building. It actually sits at an angle like this, sits into a corner with beams and it's bolted through. So the beam, it's bolted through a cross bracing and then welded to the beam on the bottom. This hole right here is not supposed to be there. This is supposed to be a solid plate except for these four bolt holes that are there. Um, this was encased in concrete uh, in a spot where we couldn't see. Um, it wasn't through the original contract. Uh, it wasn't slated to be replaced uh, because, you know, we couldn't see or couldn't anticipate the condition of this piece of metal um, without doing extensive work during the design period. Um, so this is just some of the stuff that we run into uh, as we do these contracts. You come across a, cross, a, a structural cross bracing member you know, a flange like this that is totally rotted away. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the edge, but you go from probably quarter inch, three sixteenths down to almost nothing. Um, we don't have a full picture. All we have is a little uh, quarter inch picture. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, that's, I, you know, I wish we were in person and I'm going to keep this in the office. So as you commission, as anybody wants to come in and see this, they're able to. Um, but, you know, this is just some of the unforeseen things that we come against as we go into these projects and we start renovating some of these older buildings. Um, you know, one of the, the biggest ones, the PSA building, um, there was a section of concrete floor with, as you come in the garage door within the PSA building. Uh, you walk into that doorway and we had within our main contract, uh, there was some spalling to the top layer of concrete and stuff like that. So we had to remove that spalling, um, you know, get to clean concrete and then, uh, and then replace that. So we were figuring in the contract that it'd be a two inch uh, repair just above the top layer of rebar. Uh, once we got into removing that top layer, then we could see that the spalling and the, you know, what caused that actually leaked down further. Um, we ended up going down below two layers of rebar within the uh, two foot thick concrete floor, uh, having to splice in some of the rebar that was embedded in the concrete was so corroded away, they end up having to splice new pieces of rebar in, uh, and then having to repair that floor, bringing it back up. Uh, the area just about tripled um, the area that we had to do. And then you also had, uh, you know, the additional work going down, the additional rebar repair and stuff like that. Um, so just to let, you know, Again, it's it, a lot of times, you know, we can do uh, the designers and everybody can do their best looking at the project and trying to think of all the possibilities. Um, but that's not always going to be every, once you get down into there. Uh, and I think most of the commission knows that I just want to, you know, make it known to the people that, you know, a lot of these change orders aren't just somebody coming in saying I want more money for something. You know, once you start to get into the project and start to get into the work, then you can sometimes see the full extent, which goes farther than originally anticipated. So, okay, thanks for that, Paul. But <clears throat> just so that you know, um, my feelings with respect to change orders on a project of this magnitude, um, I. I myself am not surprised about the fact that, that these change orders of this nature have come in front of us. Uh, initially, when I, when, I, when I saw what was being done down there, and I went down there on several occasions, and I, I was kind of taken, uh, take, I guess you could say taken back by the, by the fact that at, that I felt that there was going to be a lot of unknowns that was going to come up in this project. But a simple fact that you're, we were digging and taking out and removing what we thought was, was there. And I felt in, 
pretty strongly that uh, there's going to, there was going to be some surprises because um, because of the amount of excavation and and uh, work uh, to the terrain and, and what was there. So I'm not surprised by this. And when I when I mentioned the fact that that we were looking at uh, at this point in time uh, probably uh, change orders and the amount that increased the uh, final product by a little better than five percent. Um, I'm not being critical of it. Um, I'm just, in effect, saying that this is, in some case, in this particular case, the nature of the beast, and that um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty glad that we're at the point where the project is moving into the next phase. And I think, all in all, I think, I think West Construction did a, I, I thought, a, a very good job. Um, considering um, what the, what you know with the elements and and what we ended up finding as we dug you know came about so um, at this point I you know I have to say I don't have any problem with it. Um, anybody have any questions about this or comments they want to make about it? I have a question. Paul. Oh. Okay. Paul. Yep. Paul. I'm sorry, uh, Richard. You got a question, Richard? Yes, uh, Paul. Yes. Um, on the electrical, I noticed that there was an uh, increase of $136,000 for grounding. To what extent did, they, did that bill come to? And, and uh, why is it that high if they had already grounded certain areas? So I think you're talking about on one of the, one of the previous change orders, correct? Yeah. Uh, the increase that was included in there. So when the prints were done, there was there was uh, the uh, grounding wire um, was sized to a certain size um, that ran with all of the uh, all of the high tension cables underground around the uh, around the plant. Uh, okay. As, as and they went, the, yeah, as they went through the project, yeah, I, I, I didn't realize they had to go all through the whole plant. Yeah. So. Yeah. So they okay. had to resize those, and the uh, and uh, that was the increase. Um, at that time, we thought it was very fair with the market of copper, actually. Okay. And and and, uh, and when you consider um, what Richard was just re you know asking about, that that's just another example of of um, right. an item that comes up you didn't expect. Um, you know, there, like you said, like you say, Paul, something had to be rooted all the way around the property, or whatever the case may be. Um, and in a project of this nature, uh, this is what happens. The, the, the thing that the thing that has to be watched is that, you know, in dealing with situations like that, you try and you try and do your best to keep the cost down as much as possible. Yeah, well, that would that would have to be done uh, because of the vol the voltage and in place. Okay. Um, Renee, you, you have any problems with um, this change order as far as on your end? Nope. Renee, you mute. Sorry, I muted. Nope. Everything looks good. Okay. Um, okay. Then I'll entertain a motion to approve change order number five in the amount of $125,927.87 to contract number one. Motion made. Second motion. Roll call. Member Sousa? Yes. Member Howiak? Yes. President Almeida? Yes. Thank you. All right, moving along. This takes us to item number six, the Wilson Road pump station and water booster. Um, with respect to amendment seven to the contract with Wright Pierce. Um, we're looking at uh, an amendment to their contract in the amount of $825,000. Yes. Okay. Um, before we, we get into dealing with that, do we do we have any rough idea, Paul, as to what the actual cost to in terms of construction uh, 
for replacing that uh, pump station? Yeah, so, so Wilson Road overall, when we put the project, uh, project cost together, uh, it was about uh, 6.9 million um, was the total project cost. Uh, that's higher than any of, and that's including uh, this design contract uh, as well as construction contract. Okay, because I, I, I hadn't seen any number with, you know, any estimated, total estimated costs on it at this point in time. Yeah, um, it wasn't included on um, on the layout for the uh, 123 million dollar um, bond issue and so forth. So, okay, um, all right, that, that that answers my question with respect to that. Um, yeah, and, and just a little bit on this again, the cost of this station is uh, higher than any of the ones that we have done in the past. Um, so, half of this station, a portion of it, is going to be used as a water booster pump station. Mm -hmm. So the building will actually be bigger than our uh, bigger than our, our stations that we've done so far. The building water will be paying for a portion of it. Uh, it portions out to about uh, a 60 40 split, 60 percent sewer, uh, 65 percent sewer, excuse me, 35 percent water. Uh, the other thing that we're doing, we're doing with this booster station, which we haven't had to do with any of the other ones. Uh, one of the main lines that feeds from Sykes Road cross country all the way into the back of this station needs to be replaced. Uh, so in this contract, we're gonna be replacing that line too. So that's where those additional costs come from. Um, okay. I, I, you know, I've seen the, I've seen that station up on Wilson road. It's, it's, um, small it's kind of, kind of small. Yeah, I guess. Uh, kind of small. I was kind of surprised as to, well, you know, just what the uh, size of it was, but, in comparison, when this whole thing's said and done, are we looking at something that's going to be comparable to in size? I'm saying to maybe what's up at um, Present Avenue or the one up at the South End pump station. Yep. So, so this still falls into size-wise, flow-wise, one of our medium-sized pump stations, uh, just like Present Ave is in South End. Um, the building size will be about the same. Uh, except there'll be an, about another 20 feet longer. Uh, and that will be for the water booster pump station section of the building. Uh, but just for, for me to understand, that section that you just mentioned uh, will, be, will be helpful for, for feeding water to the citizens, am I right? Yeah, that'll be right. And that's at that's that 35% um, portion of the, uh, project that will be allocated to the water department. Is that right? Yes, correct. Okay. So, so and just one other thing in relation to this project, uh, we did receive a mass works grant for this project uh, in the amount of $2.5 million. I saw uh, that. That's good. Yeah. So that's that mass works grant goes towards this project. So mm -hmm. it'll be allocated between the water and sewer. Um, okay. 65-35 in that yep. sense, right? Correct. All right. So um, the eight, the eight twenty eight five that we're looking at with respect to right Pierce. Now, right Pierce, right now, as I understand it, they won the, they basically won the contract to go in and do the engineering design and so forth for the these three pump stations that we have been working on or will work on, right? Yeah, so we did an RFQ process a while ago for these for these pump stations along with other projects and they were the selected for these <laughs> projects, yes. Okay, so this port, this this portion of the contract they're doing, um, the, they're gonna go out and do what they gotta do to start designing and, uh, you know, determining costs and so forth with respect to the one on Wilson Road only? So the design has already been complete. Um, the design, at, you, uh, a while ago, a contract was approved for design of the Wilson Road pump station. We're at about 99% we're complete. So the design's pretty much complete. Uh, this includes the, uh, the construction, the bidding phase. Um, construction inspection, as well as construction management of the project. 
Uh, again, it, you know, it's there's there's a couple of different things involved within this project because we're talking a water booster pump station, so that needs to be DEP fall underneath the P regulations approved by them. Uh, we're talking the sewer pump station, just like the other ones we did. We're also talking sewer line replacement. So there's a lot of different disciplines from the engineer that need to be brought in for this project. Okay. Um, once the bids are in, when do you, when do you expect the construction to start on this once the bids are in? Um, so I'm planning on bidding this probably in the January, February timeframe. And then we'll, uh, we'll probably be looking at, I would imagine, depending on the contract and the schedule, I would say a spring start time. And uh, how long do you figure before it's complete? Uh, you're probably about a year and a half on this project, 18 uh, months to two years till it, you know, probably 18 months till it's up and running and two years till it's closed out. Okay. Um, and we, and the land in which this is all going to be, you know, put on and so forth. Um, this is all property owned by the sewer commission. Or is there any, is there? Nope. It's all, it's all property that's deeded to us uh, with the exception of the line that comes from Sykes road and feeds over uh, that we have easements for where that line is. Okay. All right. I, yeah, we're at the point where we need to get this going. And now this is going to be the third and final, or is there one more pumping station that has to be done? Uh, so within the $123 million, there was this one. The other one that was labeled in there was also Ferry Street. Uh, so that would be the fourth one that was included within the $123 million authorization. Which, uh, excuse me, which street was that? Fer Ferry Street. Ferry. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, All right. So that would be that would be the final one. We've already started some preliminary looks at that. It uh, looks like that station will most likely be a, a rehab uh, rather than a reconstruction just because of its location and some site constraints that we have it in there. Um, so that's what we're looking at for that facility. That's is that the one that's done as you're heading down towards um, uh, Battleship Cove? It's on the left. Uh, Nope. So if you continue down and if you're heading uh, down Ferry Street, so if you go uh, up Water Street, um, rather than taking a left on Eagle and going over Broadway, you take the right, you go down the hill. Yeah. Uh, like, like you're heading towards uh, Board and Light Marina. Right. Right as you get to South Almond Street there where you have to take the left, it's right on your right hand side. Uh, two small gray buildings, a round building connected to a small square building. Okay. All right, so, all right, I got you. I was, I was confused about that. Yeah, that Alrighty. was Central Street, you were thinking. Anybody have any questions or comments about this? If not, I'll obtain a motion to uh, award uh, the contract. Uh, uh, let's just, I guess you want, we want to say, this is an amendment, is it? Yep. Amendment number seven. Yeah, award amendment number seven to Wright Pierce in the amount of $825,000 for work to be done on the Wilson Road pump station upgrade and the water booth system. Make a motion. Second. Roll call. Member Sousa? Yes. Member Howiak? Yes. President Almeida? Yes. Excellent. Thank day. you. Okay, that takes us to updates on ongoing projects for President Avenue and a pump station replacement change order um, with DNC construction. Um, it's, you know, from what I can, what I've been able to surmise from the information presented to us that the change order basically nets out to zero. Um, and I think that's a great thing. Um, does anybody have any questions about this? Paul, is there any, any comments you want to make about it? Is oh, there... Yeah, this is getting pretty, uh, you know, we've been working with the contract. There's, there's been a couple of warranty issues that we've been dealing with, but this will close out the contract. Uh, uh, other than that, the pump station has been functioning very, very well. Okay. <clears throat> No questions. Um, 
Go ahead, Richard. No, nope, all set. All set. Um, all right. Uh, I guess, Paul, the fact that it's at zero, we still have to do um, an approval to the change order, correct? So I put this as update of uh, ongoing projects. So since it was uh, below 10% of the project cost or um, uh, zero, um, it, it can be administratively approved by the boards. Uh, so that's what I, I kind of put it under updates just to update the board on these changes. All right. Okay. I uh, I can I can I can go with that. Um, we have another item of uh, the South End Pump Station change order number three, uh, which um, I guess there was initially one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars of expenses that was basically balanced out with um, material that ended up not being necessary and so forth. We also ended up with a um, a zero change order. So, um, you know, as a matter of information, I, again, I think that's, that's very commendable. Um, anybody have any questions with respect to that? No. Okay, uh, the other item is the Stafford Square Amendment number one. Um, what, are we, what are we saying about that, Paul? So this is an amendment, uh, so this was uh, under 5%, uh, this was under 10% and also under 50,000. Uh, it was administratively approved, um, but I just wanted to make the commission aware of it. Uh, I'm using one, the consultant to assist us with preparing cost benefit analysis and some other narrative and inf information for a grant that we're applying for. Uh, we'll be applying for a grant um, with MEMA, uh, a FEMA grant, almost exactly like the one we had for Middle Street to do that construction project. Uh, except with a, a lot of this different types of federal funding, uh, federal funding coming through, uh, we feel that these grant programs are going to be, um, uh, uh, you know, they'll they'll be out there a lot more and be able to fund some of these larger projects. Um, so that's why we have this in place to be able to use them to move forward with uh, a lot of the, the um, aspects of the uh, grant application. Okay, um, what we're talking about here, though, is is the flooding problem at, that's at Stafford Square. Yep. Yeah. Go, go, going down the road, I I think I think uh, it's a big problem. We all know it's a big problem, and that you know the final solution to it is probably a long way down the road, but it's going to be a pretty high price item. Yeah, you know, Ray Pierce has done the initial, uh, you know, initial evaluation. Uh, they were right, right, right below forty-six million dollars for the full uh, yeah. project completion. Um, you know, I think we'll be very competitive through some of these, uh, through some of these different grant programs uh, to try to get that. Is a uh, is uh, the cost benefit analysis so far have been working out very uh, beneficial to us with some of the impacts to business, impacts to the community, impacts to uh, commercial and residential properties that occur. So, uh, okay. So it'd be competitive. All right. Dom, would you anticipate OPA money going into that in the final run? Uh, I'm sure as uh, you've all heard of me in front of city council, I would love to use OPA money for this project and all of our projects. Um, I would hope that some money potentially, if there's, you know, these grants do uh, require matches, uh, I would hope that there would be some OPA money uh, or from the new infrastructure bill. I know sewer got cut down great, got cut down drastically on the new infrastructure bill from the federal government, uh, but there is still wording in there about CSOs, but I would hope we would be able to get funding from both of those for a cash match if needed. Hey. Okay. Um, if, unless you, anybody has any question with respect to that item, I'll, I'll move on to regulatory support services agreement with CDM. Um, when I when I fumbled through some of the information that was presented to us, um, uh, am I right that this is 
the city is is under some type of um, administrative order from the EPA to um, start providing them with information with respect to performance of pumping stations and discharges at various CSOs and so forth and so on. Yeah. Um, am I right that in, in, in and I saw the uh, administrative order that was sent to us as, as part of our package. Um, they're, they're requesting an awful lot of information, um, some of which I saw was due to be completed sometime in November. Um, I guess my question is, as far as you know, was that information they requested by, no, I think it was November 15th or something, well, yeah. Were we in compliant? So the actual signed one, uh, it was a minor change that was uh, that was agreed to after uh, the board and the council approved the consent orders was extending that date out since we didn't have all the approvals and the uh, order in actual place by that time. Uh, it was to extend it out uh, to December 15th. Um, we will be compliant with the December 15th deadline that's in the actual uh, executed and recorded order. Um, so, yes, we will be compliant with those deadlines. Okay. Um, what, part, of, part of the order also talked about um, us being able to complete various projects by certain, certain times in the future. Um, I think the biggest ones were what the Ferry Street project, um, and then I think there was another one where they wanted it to be uh, completed by 2025. Yeah, is that is is that something that you think is realistic? So the projects that are within the uh, consent order, as well as the. Uh, amendment to the federal court order with Conservation Law Foundation um, all came from uh, the $123 million authorization that was approved by a referendum ballot back in November of 2017. That's where all those projects uh, came from. The only change, as explained, was rather than doing City Pier and Alton Street, um, we were doing Birch Street sewer separation. Um, we're on track to have all those projects completed um, that are laid out within those orders. Right. Uh, contract one was a, one a, was a big project. Uh, contract two going on at the wastewater treatment plant is a big project. Uh, and then the other major project that we're going to have to deal with is the Birch Street drainage area. Uh, between design and everything like that, that's probably going to be a uh, three to three and a half year uh, project, uh, probably a year to a year and a half of design, two years of construction. So that's the one that we're going to be bumping up against the edge with, um, but I'm confident that we'll be able to uh, stay with that <laughs> timeline. Okay. Well, definitely have a lot of work ahead of us, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Um, unless anybody has, in that, and by the way, what you I, it, it's, according to this here, uh, CDM has a uh, forty-five thousand dollar contract with yes. uh, with the commission to start providing some information. Am I correct? Yeah. So to be to be able to meet those December fifteenth deadlines that we had in there, uh, one was to update our NIPTES permit application, including Cove Street and President Ave. Uh, as well as uh, updating our flow monitoring on certain CSOs. Uh, and then we have <clears throat> a December 30th deadline of updating our monitoring plan for Cove Street and President Ave CSOs. Um, to comply with all those, uh, we, uh, we're working with CDM Smith to uh, make sure that everything gets uh, completed uh, and submitted by those deadlines. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess the last item under that particular update of ongoing projects, you have wastewater treatment facility improvements project contract number one update. Um, 
Is there anything you want to add to that? Or I think we discussed a lot of it just in the uh, just in the uh, conversations we've had tonight. Yes, correct. All right. Um, item number nine: other potential matters. Um, we have been given notification from the state that uh, um, the commission will be uh, participating in a uh, two million was a two million five hundred thousand dollar grant. Yes. Okay, and I think that's something you already pointed out to us, which is going to be very helpful in paying for part of the six million that we're anticipating that project to uh, cost. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, without a doubt, you know, uh, MassWorks grants, we've had them before in both water and sewer projects. Uh, they're a great organization to work with through the state, um, you know, with the, uh, with the development of the Commerce Park, uh, the Bio Park, and the uh, Industrial Park, and expansions of businesses in there. That's what gives us the good edge to be able to uh, um, be competitive for these grants. Uh, this grant is an excellent grant that we're able to get. It's $2.5 million that our rate payers will not have to pay back in loans moving forward. So, Okay. Um, Paul, who applied for the grant? Was it you? Yeah, so it was me and my staff. Um, the city, we are very, very lucky to have a good grant writer, writer Jane Di uh, uh, DiBiazio. Uh, works out of the mayor's office, and she's just phenomenal to assist us. There you go. Oh, very good. Good job. Um, please send our appreciation to her as well. I will. Um, anybody have any other matters to discuss? <clears throat> no. Everything seems okay. to be fine. Okay. Um, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. Second. Roll call. Uh, Member Sousa? Yes. Member Howiak? Yes. President Almeida? Yes. Thank you, everyone. And I uh, hope everybody has a, um, a good holiday season, healthy, and, and um, hopefully be all together when the next meeting comes. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thanks to the staff as well.